Hi everyone, so I finally plucked up the courage to record a message, plus uh, I wasn't quite in a position physically to record any um, until more recently, so I do apologise, I know that I had had some requests to record an update of where I'm at, and oh, I don't know, I. Firstly, I've never been on camera, so I feel really self-conscious and feel a bit weird doing it, but I've talked myself out of that because I know that there are people who really need to hear my experience. And if it helps, you know, anyone out there, brilliant. That's that's what I'd, I mean, I don't care about looking stupid. I kind of do, but I will overlook that for the bigger picture. And I've convinced myself of that. It's taken a while, <laughs> as you can see. So two years ago was the last time I recorded and posted a video. And they were all about Dr. Morse. Well, most of them were about Dr. Morse's uh, herbs. And they were absolutely amazing. And they helped me so much at that time. And in fact, so did the fruit diet. And I was eating salad, to be honest, as well, even with olive oil in the evenings. And I was feeling the best I had felt since the shortness of breath thing started for me chronically. You know, it was a day in, day out thing where I couldn't work anymore. I could hardly talk. You know, I couldn't really exercise. I was really like not in a great place. And somewhere along the line, I started to become worse again and my healing just took a nosedive. Then I found a practitioner, an alternative practitioner. He does energy readings. I didn't fully understand what he does. He keeps it quite <laughs> to himself, this stuff, but he's quite a well-known practitioner in the health, the natural health field. And he did an energy reading and said I was dealing with mold. There was mold in the house and that I would need to leave to be able to heal. So I was lucky enough that my sister said I could stay with her and her family. So I packed my stuff. I literally brought a pair of flip flops and some shorts because it was in the summer and a few tops and I left and that was it. I never, I, I didn't go back there again to live, to stay a night again. And it's two years later now, and so much has happened. My health continued to de uh, deteriorate. I was doing a whole load of things, trying to get back to where I was, right? I was doing enemas, coffee enemas, probiotic enemas, all sorts, fecal transplants. I did that all again. And they did help for a while, and eventually they just didn't work anymore and in fact started to trigger off panic attacks. So that's what ended up happening. And my shortness of breath became a lot worse. Again, I was in a position where I couldn't talk very much and I became bed bound. At that point, I needed to find a practitioner who would be able to come and see me. And I was struggling to find anyone that I resonated with. So at some point, I learnt about this brain retraining program called DNRS. So it stands for the Dynamic Neural Retraining System by a lady called Annie Hopper. And from what I had read and from my coach, because I we, we hired a coach for me, she was dealing with Lyme and she was bed bound too. And from her story, I realised this is this is definitely the way for me. I've tried so many things. I've got, oh, how many practitioners I had seen. And I, I gave it a shot and I practiced every day for an hour, if not more, for six months. I may have done 45 minutes on the odd occasion, but I was really committed and I struggled doing it. It was not fun, it was not easy. Uh, sometimes it was fun, don't get me wrong, fun. I mean, I wouldn't choose to do that <laughs> for fun, to be honest. But it was more fun than concentrate, you know, focusing on not being able to breathe, right? And that was all I was dealing with. So 
it was nice to actually have some kind of distraction. In fact, all I did for a while was distract. I, I took up knitting because it was a form of distracting away from how bad I felt, you know? So I wouldn't be triggered into a panic over the fact that I couldn't breathe. You know, I had dealt with the shortness of breath, but then when the panic attack started and the anxiety, wow, what a different ball game I was in, you know? Worse than how it was before. It was just a, a different, a different thing altogether. And it got to the point where I could no longer tolerate most foods. I was on broccoli and cabbage, sometimes not even cabbage, and olive oil, sometimes not even olive oil, you know? It was kind of on and off with lots of things. Uh, chicken or trout were my two foods. Sometimes I'd have guinea fowl, no, pheasant. You know, it was just like, and, and then I was intolerant to that. It was like, literally, I was losing more and more foods and I was down to pretty much one definite safe food, which is broccoli. That never changed. I was always able to tolerate broccoli. It seemed to be a real superfood for me. But everything else would kind of cause reactions from time to time. So I'd have to switch, you know, the animal protein or the vegetables. Now, the diet thing, at first I was really, I was, I was, working with an integrative doctor who had put me on a paleo diet and it seemed to work to a certain point but it was only until I went the fruit route, Dr Morse's direction that things started to really improve and but I was still transitioning so I was still kind of in between the two but I was still improving and I thought okay this feels good to me to do it this way rather than just eat fruit and I know for some people they can they can do that and it works for them but it didn't it didn't resonate with me and and I'm still comfortable with that with that decision because I've come out of it the way that I have and I'm not eating just fruit and I'm not even eating vegan and I tried that in fact I tried vegan as well and it and it wasn't quite working for me what, what did work for me though, and I'll just concentrate on that because that's the most important thing at the end of the day. And, you know, maybe in the future I may become vegan. Maybe that's the direction I might go in. I don't, I don't even know. I'm still in the middle of working out what's what, but right now I'm, I've introduced basically most of my foods back in. I did react at the beginning, but now I pretty much can eat anything I want apart from, I can't, drink alcohol yet if I want to later on maybe I will I don't know if I do want to but we'll see coffee's another one the stimulants sugar I don't want to eat processed sugar anyway you know refined white sugar I don't want to eat that and those are basically the things I can't or choose choose not to eat but can't really drink I mean the alcohol and the coffee I can't do that yet I could probably eat sugar if I wanted to now, but I just don't want to. And gluten's another one. Just don't want to eat that. But I don't even want to focus on diet because it's not all about diet. And that's something I focused on for the majority of this whole experience. I focused on what is the right diet for me? What is the right diet for humans? What is, you know, and I focused on it so much. Everything else got forgotten about. And I was... I was stressed about the whole thing because one person says one thing and another person says something else and it was really confusing and my head couldn't take it anymore and in fact that reflected in my reactions, my physical reactions. So it wasn't until I became bed bound and at my absolute worst that I then did the DNRS program, started that and found an amazing kinesiologist that was able to test my body to see what supplements and what food would strengthen it and what ones would weaken it. And that's what actually helped me heal, um, as well as the DNRS, right? I think if, if I had either one of them, I would have healed. I really strongly believe that. But it's what resonates with us, right? Not one thing is going to be working for for everyone. So 
probably four months into working with that kinesiologist, I realized it was working for me, even though I felt worse. And my brain was telling me, oh, I'm getting worse and whatever. But I kept going because I knew that I needed to focus on something. And if I wasn't going to make it, I needed to know that I had given it my all. So I did that and I continued and I kept brain retraining at the same time as working with the homeopathy. And four months later, my menstrual cycle began and it had been gone for over a year. And I knew then that I was healing. I may not feel it, I may not see it physically, but there was a sign and I took it and I said to myself, right from now on, no matter what happens, how bad I feel, how my brain is trying to tell me that this isn't the way forward and whatever, even though it makes sense to me, when I'm in a good place, it made sense to me, but when I'm in a fearful place, it really didn't. I was really questioning it. And so I continued that way and slowly, slowly, I was able to eat more and more foods. I was able to tolerate supplements easily. I mean, I was able to walk out into the garden, step out and just do a little lap of walking slowly. And eventually I was able to walk for a few minutes. And I mean, now I'm able to leave the house and even drive. I couldn't drive. And I was a driving instructor. I couldn't drive for a few years at all. I, I, it would trigger a massive anxiety, panic attack, plus with the shortness of breath, I couldn't afford that, you know? So I was easily triggered. I just couldn't drive anymore. Everything was so stimulating to me. Noises, lights, anything. Even the cats that are walking around, they were over, overly stimulating me. So I'd have to be in a room with no movement, you know, just silent. <laughs> I couldn't even meditate. It was so difficult to just sit there and just be with my body that felt so uncomfortable. I just wanted to escape it, which actually is probably the reason I was reacting because I was not, I was, I was escaping something actually I should be sitting with and accepting that it's there. And instead I was like, no, I'm pushing it away. And I realized and I learned that <clears throat> To get over something, you have to accept it and allow it to be there. You know, um, I can go on about this <laughs> in another message, but I don't want to make this one too long. I've tried, a f I've attempted quite a few different recordings and I'm getting to the 15 minute mark. So I'm hoping that with this message, it will be enough to give a bit of an update and just to give a proper update um, as to where I'm at right now, I'm breathing so much more comfortably. I'm up every day out of bed. I've more recently, the last few weeks, I've managed to go to a theatre show in central London, which was a massive deal for me because I haven't been there for years. So many people, busy, busy. I've been to the cinema twice. I've been to a picnic yesterday. I drove all the way there and all the way back. That was probably about a five hour journey on a dual carriageway where I haven't been able to do that, to drive on a dual carriageway for a long time because of the fact that it would trigger this panic of being stuck <laughs> and not being able to veer off and stop if I needed to, you know? Um, so that was massive for me. Uh, I also went bowling the other day. So, so many things are happening. I'm, I'm behaving and I'm living a more no normal life. Okay. I'm not working yet. Um, that's my sort of next, maybe not my next stage, but I'm pla I've planned a little trip to travel somewhere in the UK to sort of practice just to kind of get me onto the next level really. And so that's where I'm at right now. I really hope that this message inspires anyone who's in the position I was in or anything similar. I had so much stuff going on. Um, feel free to ask me any questions if you want to see anything else on, a, on another video. Um, I'm more than happy to share. Okay, so take care. Bye.